Here we go for game three between Great and Vaughn e Suba to see who can take this series home. We're tied up 1 1 and ready to go. Both these teams show they have what it takes. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, a slightly messy game from Great and Voxes, but they've got a Celeste now that gives them a really good late game powerhouse. The range should be good enough against what uh, is brought to the table here by Asuba. You do have to worry about the Reza, though. Reza can always be a menace. He is going to be top lane, so he'll be slightly starved of gold uh, compared to somewhere like mid or jungle, but he will still be a threat even with just that Aftershock on board. Yeah, always have to keep your eyes on that. I mean, Rez is one of those heroes that honestly, I think when played most effectively, is just that surprise factor shows up and suddenly someone's dead. And if he can make that happen, it's going to be great for his team. Crystal Treant being contested over here, but it looks like that's going to go the way of Sweet Honor, although Sweet Honor is incredibly low. A dash forward, Marnie getting a lot of damage down, but they're going to respect it as the healing class comes out. Turn around, take this double camp, a little bit of efficiency for themselves. This is so weird. Just having played uh, sort of tier 10 and above in Europe, the way that you generally tend to approach first CP buffs is you invade their CP buff because you have your bottom duo. Your bottom duo is going to be your jungler and your bot laner. You push the bot lane wave in, you meet your mid laner and your support, and you take or take advantage of that uh, opponent's CP buff side jungle. Great and Voxus try to contest their own. Then they end up in a two versus two versus a Black Feather and an Alpha, which again, early game is going to be a bit of a pain for Celeste if they can get on top of her. Uh, they end up getting forced out of the lane. They lose minion waves. They do get their own CP buff, but it was by pure luck with a steal, or you could say calculated, I guess. you. Must. I mean, I would say calculated on that one. Uh, okay, cal I, I would give them the benefit of the doubt with calculated, but it's, a, it's almost a 50-50 shot, right? In, 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 in a lot of instances. It's almost a 50-50 shot. Yeah. That was a risky, risky way to play the early game. If you just linked up with your Sky and Fortress and gone into their, their CP buff and then just traded CP buffs, it would have been much easier for you. Oh. Yes, exactly. And now the level advantage is there, Humanist. The level advantage and Celeste is getting thrown out of lane. She's got 10 CS compared to 18. That's almost double CS now in favor of the um, Malines back pocket. And this is just bad start for Celeste, dude. So, I mean, one of the ways I look at countering out heroes when to draft a pick for a game, I mean, there's a lot of different, specifically when I'm looking to carry a game, I, I want to know, like, what how tanky is my opponent and when i specifically like one of the triggers for for getting strong picks is if you just see a squishy pick now like a certain heroes fit, fit that bill like kestrel celeste and Maline having an advantage into the celeste and well, she's actually taking a lot of damage should be able to kite back it's gonna be okay d3 over here screwing up the crystal now that actually goes over to buka so a nice take by inboxes this is gonna mean that they take a slight advantage here but Malene into the Celeste, if she is able to land one, two abilities, she's going to take the Celeste down to like 25% health almost every time. I mean, this yeah, is going to be a dream. Post level eight, that should be really difficult. This is an interesting move from Great Inboxes. They are low. They're trying to take their own CP buff. Uh, again, it's super made the mistake. They actually uh, tried to contest their own CP buff and that ended up losing them that fight, but they do rectify it by going straight in as a four-man unit and taking the CP buff away from Celeste. So it was a good rectification. Oh. Jaraxxus Oh, only Get just him. surviving. Get him! No, oh, so much fear. I can smell it from here. So overall, though, although we talk about all the good moves that great, um, great boxes have been making, sorry, super have been making. Great boxes actually have the minor gold lead, about a thousand gold there or thereabouts at this point in the game. The only thing I could probably attribute that down to is the difference in CS in the bot lane potentially. There's a small, there's small CS differences opening up that could. Uh, bring you that total gold difference now that you see for Isuba. Almost the setup here in mid as he, you see the Merciless Pursuit. And to, it, this is one of one of the easiest combos in the Merciless Pursuit into a core class. You're, you're almost guaranteed to land the follow-up stun if that Celeste was in range. Just playing a little scared there. Not quite sure why, but they're going to be okay. Jindak now back into the mid lane with Mattis. Uh, it's just kind of a, a farm zone at this point. Uh, Dodgio's going to get back. I mean, I would really like to see some pressure come out onto the Celeste uh, in the next couple of minutes. But, I mean, you, you made a good point. Like, as, as Celeste, if she can easily get to level 8 and beyond, life is going to get a lot easier for her. So they'd, it'd be nice if they could do something here. 
By the way, we haven't really talked much about the compositions yet, Humanist. If you look at what Great Invoxes are running, it's essentially a triple support. You're running Catherine, you're running Arden, who's gone for the Crucible first, and you're also going to be having a Fortress who's likely going to be building fairly tanky. So you're going for a heavy Protect Sky Celeste composition here. This is a, an interesting trade here. The, the rotation... It was in Alpha was in top lane when that Crystal Trant started up and then tried to move down to try and do something with his team. Now he's 30, going on 40 seconds here. It just feels like a complete inefficient rotation. But now, potentially a fight to jump in from Marnie. Looks like Attack of the Pack is actually out here. Infinite Reboot down on the Alpha. Alpha's gonna be the first to drop. That's your first blood. That's actually two kills for Great Inboxes to start it off. One will be returned as Buka drops down on that sky and now trying to kite back. Can they get... Oh, uh, yeah, they've got the damage. This is going to be actually another kill. Three, four. Oh, I'm trying not to cuss here. Kills six minutes in. They take four kills off the back of that fight. And hashtag, where's my Reza? Yeah, Reza is super needed in these team fights for Isuba to be able to dive onto that Celeste or that Sky. They just didn't have the item spikes necessary. Two Serpent's Masks on uh, Alpha and Blackfeather, respectively. Not enough right now to be able to strictly burst out these heroes of the Celeste and the Sky. Sky even face tanked their entire composition for that entire fight and still didn't go down. Unfortunately, the damage just isn't quite there yet, and you're not even at your first item for Malene. So that was a, a nice collapse on the team fight there for Great Invoxus. And Isuba, overall, just need to wait a little bit longer before they can execute and try and go for these blow up Celeste style fights. We also definitely need to have Reza online, who's gone for a Spellfire first. Interesting choice of item there, first humanist. It's going to reduce the um, barrier from the Arden, potentially reduce some healing from a fountain if it ever comes out. But I mean, what mortal wounds are you really that worried about this game? Serpent's Mask on Sky, maybe, but you could probably get that, work that in somewhere else. I think Malene definitely is going to go for it. He's going to go Aftershock second, so I think they won't fight until the Aftershock is online, humanist. Yeah, and that means that it's just going to be that much more uh, of a for the Celeste, who pretty much had a huge fight gifted to her. Now, Great Invox is moving in. They're feeling confident. Death from above is going to be blocked off. The Gauntlet comes down. Looks like they're going to be able to find another kill, making the score five to one, seven and a half minutes in. Plus a Gold Oak. Sweet Honor not even being threatened at this point. And this is uh, starting to be a feels bad man for Isuba. I really like this from Great Invoxes. They've got the Aftershock on Fortress, a little bit of burst damage coming out from him. The Spellfire, which gives you a decent-ish mid-game spike with the Celeste. They're going to continue their pressure. They know that they are in the lead in terms of uh, item power spikes, level power spikes, but also in terms of global gold too. I love this aggressive stuff coming out from Great Invoxes. Now, a really good thing for them to do would be to rotate Bart as a unit and take that bot lane tier one. This should be an easy take for them, barring that they don't take some turret aggro and make uh, some kind of sloppy mistakes now. They're in with a Merciless Pursuit. Death from above cuts off the escape. D3 taking a lot of damage. De Netherform Detonator trying to reposition, but this is a dead Reza. Reza having minus impact at this point. Not even zero. This is negative impact, you scoundrel. And uh, Marnasar over here just watching his turret go down, trying to clean out the saves here. I don't even know about this. Maybe it's space created. He's down into the infinite reboot, will be dying. And you, you look into top, so Warren uh, is maybe taking a, a turret there himself, but nothing really happening in mid either. Uh, it, it's good trade of pressure from Warren, and he's farming up. This is what a Blackfeather is going to need to do. Get that breaking point online, get some defenses behind you, and then suddenly you're going to become a significant threat in these fights. But I don't know what the Reza and the Alpha were thinking trying to defend that. You're going up against a Sky, a Catherine. I think the Fortress was there as well. That is so much tower dive potential, with so much longevity attached to it as well. Two versus four trying to defend a tier one turret. Just give it up, bro. Just give the turret up. You don't need it. Just give it up. Warren, I think it's time to leave. I think it's time to get out of here. Uh, Rose Offensive. Core Collapse is there, and you're dead. That's four heroes from Great Inboxes. Uh, a nice little cleanup there. Um, and and kind of, you know, one of, it's a bummer when you do see a hero, the, like all the space from his team was created for him to get something out of it. Nobody else got anything out of it. And then the next engagement, he throws it away. So that that really feels bad. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a little bit over aggressive and Jaraxxus has gone for a pulse weave first item with the war treads on Catherine. What does that tell you, Humanist? That tells you that he is looking to engage whenever possible on this Catherine. They, even though they scale well, they actually have a, a late game uh, solid composition with the Celeste. They know that they want to push their advantage, so they're going to allow this Catherine to be their frontline engaging tool, try and continue to apply that pressure over and over. And I really like that in, in 
cohortion with the fortress they've got so much forward moving pressure with this composition oh absolutely and no i i really like it i like the way down and it makes sense and you no know, so the best players in the world when they get an, a small advantage they push that advantage as hard as they can and it actually can be kind of awkward for lower skill tier players playing with a high skill tier player when when that high high skill player gets an advantage and you're like dude you why can you can we just back off for a second and the answer is no dude you want to keep that pressure on so i really like this here and oh they found the black feather one more time you can rose offensive you can dance if you want to uh, I was gonna say I thought he was gonna go down, but they actually find a little bit of damage on the backside. Solar Storm will put Alpha into the infinite reboot. Black Feather dies on the top side of the fight. Alpha quickly to follow. Double Looks kill. like a dodge will be able to second as a double kill comes through for the fortress. Sky finds the Reza Malines down. It's the ace in your face. Eleven minutes in, putting up great in boxes. Thirteen to two, doing good. How about you? This game is pretty done, though, Humanist. This is almost entirely over. Isuba had nothing in this game they threw it away with that second rotation i feel where actually they had the advantage from the early game they tried to contest their own cp buff and kind of threw away a lot of pressure that pressure has now gone down the drain you've got really good late game scaling already two items on the celeste online two items with some defense online for the sky too and you just don't have the damage output to burst these heroes you want to be like two tapping this celeste but you're just not able to they just don't have the damage yeah, the damage wasn't there, but and this is like it's gonna be another easy kill, putting them up 14 to 2. In fact, we might lose the Malene here. At... Yeah, <laughs> rest in peace, bud. Uh, th the thing is, I feel like it's it was really heavy on rotations through the early mid game, and then a failure to capitalize on space being created. Like, if you're gonna create space for for a hero, you're gonna try and make one of your allies buff and be like, this, this is our chance, right? We're gonna make Black Feather big, right? He's he is the guy that's gonna jump and kills the Celeste. Yeah. But then he gets focused down multiple fights in a row, and essentially you've thrown away all hope you have in the game, and th th that's why I hear you calling out the GG. But I don't know. This this is a miracle. Feels like a 95% chance that boxes win this one. Yeah, I think so too. The problem with the Black Feather in this composition, Humanist, is he doesn't really have anybody that supports him. All of their composition goes in or goes home. They've got Alpha, they've got Black Feather, they've got Reza, even Malene to an extent. If they get engaged on by the Catherine or engaged on by the Fortress or even with the Arden Gauntlet, they have to make a decision. Do we run through this beefy front line to try and get to that back line, which we can't even burst, or do we kite backwards, which we're absolutely useless at doing? We've got another fight. Another fight coming out here. Black Feather's made the call to jump in. He's actually going to try and get onto the back here, but he's slept and taken on down. Alpha will get there with the Termination Protocol, but there's no damage coming on through. Three down, four down, make it five. Nobody's alive. Great and Voxes take their second ace. They'll take the armory just for style points. Pad those stats, baby. And this will be the Vein Crystal going down 13 minutes in. How about those apples, Excoundrel? Well, I mean, it was kind of sold from about five minutes that this was looking like a game that Great Invoxers were going to win, and they do. They take it two to one over them. It was not clean on either side, Humanist. I want to lie and tell you that it was, but this was probably the cleanest game. I lie to you every day. It was probably the cleanest game for Invoxers that we've seen over the course of the last three. Uh, the item builds were really solid this time round. I think that they got their carries into a position where they could be protected really easily. The super composition was, was can I say it? Trash. Um, it was really bad. And unfortunately, they didn't have the support for a Black Feather. He was getting mullered by that front line. Too much CC for him to deal with. And just Rose Offensive is good, but not that good.